How many use dry? Okay. And oil? Okay. Um, I use all three, but I prefer to stay away from the oil because when you're dressing it, first thing you have to do is get the oil out of it. So, to get I, what I do to get the oil out, of it, you can either use dish detergent and then let it dry, or I use uh, bar salt. Same thing, you have to let it dry, and then you have to re-oil it afterwards. If you try and dress it when it's got oil in it, it just makes a mess. I noticed in the um, Lee Valley Tools catalog, um, they sell grit for, for dressing your stones, and they recommend you put a little bit of oil in it or a little bit of water. I find if you just leave it dry, that it works much better. Um, this is my dry stone. I thought I'd bring this in. This is a new stone. This is one that I've had for about 10 years. So, it's, this is the one I use all the time. Um, and then I have my Japanese water stones as well. They all dress exactly the same. Um, I usually, when I, when I dress my stones, I do all my stones, and I start with the coarsest stone and work my way to the finest stone. Now you can buy a silicone carbide grit from Lee Valley. They sell a basic, which is 90 grit, um, and then they sell a, uh, a package where it's different grits go from 90 up to 250. I find that when you use the 90 on your real fine stones, it looks rough, but when you're sharpening your tools, it doesn't make any difference because of the stone. Um, use a, I use a table that has a rubber top to it. If you don't have a table with a rubber top, I suggest that you put a rubber mat down and then I use plate glass. This is quarter inch plate glass. Um, I know some people have tried to use window glass. Don't use window glass, it's too flexible and it wears out quickly. So try and get a piece of plate glass. That white area is just from wearing and that's, that's from me using it. Okay. okay. You use both sides and you just put a little bit of grit on the glass and it's just a matter of going in semicircles and it goes very quickly now I I go one way and then I turn it the opposite way because it doesn't matter how careful you are you always put more pressure on one hand depending on whether you're right or left-handed so if you keep switching it it goes down or you end up with one that's real thick at one end and narrow at the other end and there's a, a flat stone that's about all it takes. Just, just that one minute worth of work. Pardon? Just that one minute worth of work. Well, you can tell that it's flat because it's all light colored. Okay. If there's a, a low end, it'll still be dark. Um, that was pretty fat to begin with, though. Yeah, I don't let my stones get bad. Um, I picked this stone up. This is my father's stone that he used in World War II to sharpen his, he was a barber, he used it to sharpen his razors. And it had never been flattened. I dressed it in about 20 minutes. But I, I cleaned it with Varsol first, and then I re-oiled it. Do you reheat that grit? Reuse it? Yeah. Re um, well, what I do is I start with my coarsest stone then work my way to my finest stone, and then by that time, then you just throw it away. Uh, I think he means, do you use that again, or do you throw that away? I throw it after I'm done all my stones, I throw it away. It's not that, you don't use that much of it, you use maybe an ounce of it. Um, that's a cup of grit, and that probably lasts me about three or four years, right? 
Um, um, where I buy it, it's uh, $16 per cup. Lee Valley sells it um, four ounce, which is half that, for $8.95. I looked it up. I'll let you know. Where else can you get it? I buy it through my speed skating supplier. Okay. Uh, Lee Valley is $6.90 for a four ounce. Okay, so it's a container book. Same grip for with oil stone or water stone? Yes, same grip for both. Um, I just, and as I said, Lee Valley sells different grades of grit. This is 90 grit. They sell a kit where you buy five different grits and go all the way up to 250. I've tried the 250. Your stone looks really nice, but when you're sharpening your tools, it doesn't make any difference. You still end up with a mirror finish on your 4,000 4, grit. This, this stone is 800 on one side and 1,000 on the other. This is 800. No, 1,000. And this is 4,000. And with my, my kids speed skating, they use an 8,000 for polishing their skates. But it's the same stone. So I've done the one side. And it doesn't take much to do a stone. And I find it it's best if it's dry. You get a much it goes much quicker if it's dry. If it's wet like Lee Valley tells you in the catalog, it forever cakes up and you're always moving it around. As you see on my table here. Now once you've done this, I take it to my laundry uh, sink, take a, a scrub brush and under running water just scrub it off to get all of the dust out of it and then I just let it dry. That one I use dry. But as I say, all of the stones are the same. This is my water stone. With the water stone you have to make sure it's really dry. I've let this one dry for four days before I decided to bring an insulate. What grid is that? Thousand. See, there's one spot here where it's dark. That's where I've got a gouge when I was sharpening a, a quarter inch chisel. Can you get that on the camera? Oh, sorry. There's a dark spot here in the center. There was a gouge in my stone. Oh, right here. Okay. So if you're going to do another chisel, you have to get that out. And it's gone. It's, it's that easy to to dress your stones. And if your stones aren't flat, then your plain blades and chisels don't sharpen evenly. If your wife's watching TV upstairs, you'll get in trouble. <laughs> How much force do you apply? You really I'm, I'm actually putting quite a bit of force. Yeah. Um, if you if you're just starting with it, just don't put a lot of force to it because then you get uneven. But I've been doing it a long time and 
I pretty well have it even on both hands. Yeah. But notice I put use my fingers on this flat, yeah. so it gets an even pressure on the stone, so it doesn't rock. Yeah. 